Good afternoon guys, as you can tell, we're out in the middle of a cotton field or if you've never seen a cotton field, this is what cotton looks like. And today I'm gonna show you how a cotton plant actually develops and goes to produce the most widely natural, most sustainably produced fiber in the world. Uh, first, before we get on to how a cotton plant develops, I just thought I'd give you a few interesting facts about cotton. Cotton is grown in many countries around the globe. The U.S. actually produces the third most cotton of any country in the world. Uh, we're, uh, we're behind India and China and total cotton production. Last year in 2020, uh, U.S. cotton producers produced uh, approximately 15 million bales off of 12 million acres. And this compares to, to corn, which is grown on about between 90 to 93 million acres in the U.S. So cotton is still a major U.S. crop, but uh, definitely not along the lines of corn and soybeans. Uh, cotton in the U.S. is produced pr predominantly in 17 states, ranging from Virginia all the way out to California, with Texas being the largest cotton producer at about 40% of the total U.S. cotton crop. Just like wheat, there's different types of cotton grown for different purposes. Uh, there's about three to four different types of classifications of cotton that's grown. Uh, by far the bulk of the U.S. cotton crop, I think about 97% is called upland cotton, which is what we have behind us. Upland cotton has uh, comparatively shorter fiber lengths than the other types of cotton, but uh, it's used in a wide variety of purposes. You know, everything I'm wearing right here is upland cotton. It's typically used for clothing and other, and other stuff. Uh, you also have uh, Pima cotton, which is grown in the American Southwest, uh, your Arizona, California, uh, places like that. It has a very long uh, staple or fiber length and is generally fine. It's the kind of cotton that really feels soft on your skin. It's uh, basically the same thing as Egyptian cotton, although Egyptian cotton is actually grown in the Nile River Valley in Egypt, but it has the exact same characteristics as Egyptian cotton, and it's usually used for your finer uh, bed linens and everything, the ones that really feel, the ones that really feel soft and silky. Uh, you also got a, a collar cotton, which is uh, similar to upland cotton. Uh, you got organic cotton, which is generally upland cotton, just grown using organic practice. But today we'll be talking to you about uh, upland cotton. Uh, here in our area of West Tennessee, what we would consider a good yield would be somewhere in the ballpark of 1,100 to 1,500 pounds of lint per acre. That's what we consider a good year. Theoretically, scientists have said an acre of cotton could produce up to 12,500 pounds of lint in a, in a given year if everything is perfect. But we don't live in a perfect world. I mean, we have to deal with weather, we have to deal with pests, uh, you know, we have to deal with, with drought. Uh, there's a whole host of factors that is working to reduce the cotton yield from the time that that seed is put into the ground until the time that the harvester moves through the field. Like I said earlier, cotton is the most abundant natural fiber in the world. Uh, you know, you got, you've also got wool and silk, but cotton is far more plentiful than those. Uh, it's grown using generally sustainable practices. Uh, especially on, especially on our farm, we strive to produce cotton as sustainable as possible, trying to minimize our use of synthetic inputs and increase, uh, our uses of, of natural ways to grow the crops and combat weeds and pests. That's not to say we're organic, but we do implement some organic principles just trying to merge science with nature in order to produce a high yield and sustainable high quality crop. Another fact about cotton, cotton can absorb up to 24% of its weight in water. It is a breathable fabric and also an absorbent fabric. In fact, by the time I get done in this cotton field today, my shirt here, which has begun to get wet, will probably weigh close to 24 times of what it did when I first put it on this morning. That's how much water uh, cotton can absorb. You don't see that out of your synthetic fibers. 
And just to give you a few facts about what one bale of cotton can produce, and just for your information, a bale of cotton is officially 480 pounds of lint. Generally, it can fluctuate between 480 and 500 pounds, but a bale of cotton is considered 480 pounds of lint. So one bale of cotton can make 850s lady shirts, 8,400 handkerchiefs, 400 men's pajamas, 540 men's dress shirts, 500 adult sweatshirts, and so on. You get the idea. One bale of cotton, 480 pounds, can make a lot of stuff. And usually, year in, year out, American producers produce about 15 million bales of cotton, of which about 80% of it is exported to mills overseas where the labor and the cost are cheaper and there the the, the raw cotton is uh, is transformed into fabrics and clothing which is then imported back into the u.s generally enough about some uh, fun facts of cotton our primary object is to show you how cotton goes from a seed to fiber that is harvested the whole premise behind cotton development is based on heat units it takes a specific number of heat units for cotton to grow through its different stages and become mature. Uh, this heat unit is called a DD60, and it's based on the premise that cotton does not do any kind of development under 60 degrees in temperature. Cotton is a tropical crop. In fact, it's actually a perennial crop where down around the equator, you know, the cotton plant will never die and will come back. It's a very bushy uh, sh shrub is, is basically what, what it is. However, in our climate, cotton dies out every year because it can't survive the winters. But, uh, you know, the reason cotton is not grown farther north is because there's not a long enough growing season. There's not enough, uh, the cotton would not be able to accumulate enough DD60s in order to grow and mature out. Uh, basically, a DD60 is a heat unit and, uh, you know, it's based on the 60 degree temperature that cotton cannot grow beneath. So the way you figure a DD60 is you take your maximum temperature for the day, you take your minimum temperature for the day, and you figure out what that average temperature is for the day, and then you subtract 60 from it, and that's how many DD60s you get. Just for instance, if you have a high of 90 degrees for a day and a low of 70 degrees for the day, which is kind of an average temperature in West Tennessee, that gives you an average temperature of 80 degrees for the day. You subtract uh, 60 from that, and that gives you 20 DD60s that you've accumulated for the day. So knowing that, you can kind of calculate how long it takes cotton to grow and mature. Uh, when the seed is uh, planted in the ground, in our area, generally it's, um, it's early to mid-May. When the soil temperatures reach about 65 degrees, we have good uh, growing conditions and a good forecast. Uh, cotton will begin to imbibe water and will start sprouting. And generally it takes about 50 to 60 DD60s for that cotton to sprout and then emerge from the soil. From then, cotton will then begin to grow vegetatively until it starts putting on its first fruiting structures. And for that to happen, you gotta accumulate roughly 450 DD60s. So if you're accumulating uh, 20 DD60s a day, you know, it should take uh, 22, 23 days in order to for the first fruiting structures to start developing on the plant. Now early season we're not accumulating 20 DD60s per day. We probably have an a high temperature of 83, 84 degrees. Heck, it might even be down in the down in the 70s, and we might have an average temperature for the day of 70 to 75 degrees. Maybe only picking up 10 to 15 DD60s. Uh, if that's the case, then it takes longer than 20 to 22 days for the cotton to start producing reproductively, which is uh, really what we saw this year. We had extremely cold, wet conditions after planting, and basically the cotton just sat there for about two weeks and did not do anything because it wasn't accumulating any heat units. Now, once it reaches uh, about 450 D60s, uh, cotton will start begin putting on fruit, and the first uh, stage of uh, the first stage of cotton reproduction is to put on a square. A square is where the fruit begins on the plant and then will ultimately develop. Now I picked this from the very top of the plant, but this is what a pinhead square looks like. Uh, this is, you know, once this becomes visible to the naked eye, and this is a, the very beginning developments of a fruiting structure, structure called a square. 
Now as the plant grows and progresses, that square will get bigger and eventually, you know, it will eventually it will grow to about this size. This is a square that's about to bloom. Now from the time it it's pinhead square till the time it gets to this stage is so it takes approximately 350 DD60s for it to become the stage. And then one, and then once this uh, square becomes mature, it will then bloom. It will bloom into a white flower. That right there is a bloom that just emerged over the overnight hours last night. Now after 24 hours, if there's sufficient heat, that bloom will begin to turn peak and it'll take about 48 hours for the bloom to turn completely pink. Here's an example right here of a bloom that's probably between 24 and 48 hours old. See, it's turned pink. And then at this stage, the bloom is done and then it will begin to dry up and just like this one, and then it will fall off and naturally shed. And then beneath that, you have a new bowl. Now the bowl is where the cotton is actually produced. Now right here, we've got a bowl that has been, uh, that I've cut open. It's not close to mature, but it'll kind, of give you the, it'll kind of give you the idea of what goes on inside the bowl. But the first thing that's produced are, are that the seeds start growing. You can see two, three, you can see three seeds right here. This is the beginning stages of the seeds. Now if you look closely, those seeds look a little fuzzy. And they are fuzzy because the fibers, the cotton that we harvest, actually grows out of the seed. The seed is what produces the fibers. And then it ultimately looks something like this. Now we're picking, uh, we're picking the cotton out of one lock on this bowl. Typically bowls of the cotton that we grow will produce between uh, four to five different compartments like this, which we call locks per bowl. And inside each lock, we'll typically have between six to eight seeds in this amount of cotton right here. We'll kind of pull it apart. And see here we have the raw seed. And you can see there's still some fibers attached to it. But you can see the, you can see the seed right there. Like I said, in each lock we'll have between uh, you know six to eight. We'll have between six to eight seeds in here. So each uh, mature cotton bowl right here can have between 24 and 40 seeds in this entire bowl. Now right here I've got a good representation of how a uh, cotton develops from a square to a bloom to a pink bloom, to a young bowl, medium mature bowl, a bigger bowl, and then finally a bowl that is almost mature and is in the process of opening up. Now this bowl right here was not mature enough to open up. I helped it along by cutting along the seams of the locks with a knife, but ultimately when the cotton gets mature, this is where the hole will split along the side of each lock and then it will spread open and the cotton that you see inside will then fluff out and it'll be ready for harvest. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the fruiting structure of cotton. Cotton is a very neat and unique plant in the way that it sets fruit. Now I've pulled up a cotton plant right here and I've removed all the leaves, well almost all the leaves, to where you can see just the fruiting structures of a plant. Now a cotton plant is an indeterminate plant. That means that it can grow both vegetatively and be producing fruit at the same time. Whereas like a corn plant does all of its growing vegetatively first and then it will then produce the crop that you're harvesting, the fruit. <clears throat> now by growing indeterm uh, indeterminately, uh, you know, cotton can really adapt to a lot of different conditions. 
uh, it can adapt for uh, low plant density by increasing the amount of fruiting structures that it has and increasing its height and notes. Now this uh, cotton plant has about 23 different nodes and a node is the space on the main stem between branches. Now we start down here, the very first node is right here. This is where the cotyledons were, we got one. And then we start having opposing branches on each side after the cotyledons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-two nodes on this, not twenty-three. Now on this cotton plant, we have different branches. We've got branches like this, which are main fruiting branches which are called sympodial branches. And then we have branches like this, which are generally lower down on the plant that we call monopodial branches or vegetative branches. And basically kind of what it is, is a second main stalk to add additional fruiting structures on to compensate for environmental conditions, low plant density or whatnot. But for development purposes, we'll focus on the sympodial branches as they go up the plant. So go ahead and pull these vegetative monopodial branches off. Now cotton is very well defined in how it puts on fruit and matures up the plant. Now with each sympodial branch that you have here, you also have a what we call a main leaf branch, which I've already taken off. But basically it's like this right here. And, uh, this uh, main leaf branch provides uh, photosynthates for the main stalk. And then you got your first fruiting branch right here. This is where a big part of your cotton yield comes from and it's very important to protect it. But on this sympodial branch, you'll have different, different positions of your fruiting structures. Uh, here's where the branch attached to the stem. Here's your first position fruiting structure, your first position square, or right now it's your first position bowl. And then you'll have your second position bowl. And then actually right here was supposed to be a third position bowl, but the plant aborted it. And then we got a fourth position. Uh, this one's already bloomed, so this is a bowl. You got your fourth position here. Then you got your fifth position right here on the very end of the branch, which has not bloomed yet. Now, generally, you know, your crop will progress from closer to the stalk out to the end of the stalk. Uh, from the time that your uh, first position square blooms to the time that your second position square blooms, it takes about six days. And then it'll be about another six days for your third position, another six days for your fourth position. So this one just bloomed. So this uh, bowl right here bloomed about 24 days ago. It bloomed uh, somewhere about August, uh, uh, bloomed somewhere around August 3rd, whereas this one just bloomed. All right, going back to our main stalk here, here's your first position bowl on your first fruiting uh, branch. All right, here's your next fruiting branch, and here's your second position bowl here. It takes about three days to move blooming from branch to branch. So you got your first position bowl here, and then this one right here, your next one bloomed about three days after this one did. And then you got your next uh, fruiting branch up over there. This one bloomed about three days after this one did. So we got uh, bloom here, six, uh, we got a uh, bloom here, six days later, 12 days later, 18 days later, but it kicked off. 24 days later, bloom here. Three days later, six days later, nine days later, and this one right here that kicked off. This one been 12 days later, 15, 18, and so on. Now when a cotton plant first starts blooming, it will generally grow about the same pace vegetatively as it's adding fruit structures. That means your nodes above white flower, how many nodes, how much stalk you still have above your first position white flower will generally remain the same. And it will remain that same for, you know, a week or two. Now, they, all these bowls require large photosynthetic and nutrient demands. 
and when you start getting a big uh, bowl load in the bottom of the plant, the plant will start diverting resources from growing vegetatively to trying to fill the fruit and it will show and it will slow down growing vegetatively at the top. And then your nose above white flower will start decreasing. When we get to nose above white flower equals five, that means when your first position white flower only has five nodes above, above it, that's what we call cotton cutout. At that point, cotton uh, really slows down. It doesn't quite stop, but it really slows down growing vegetatively and it tries to fill out the remainder of its plants. Now this right here, this bloom is, we'll, we'll look at this square right here. Now this square will probably bloom in two days. And right now it's, it, once this blooms, we will be one, two, we will be three nodes above white flower when this one right here squares. At this point, the cotton is all, is pretty much done growing and it will focus on growing uh, reproductively the, re the rest of the year. Now the amount of time it takes for cotton to go from a bloom like this to a bowl that is opening takes approximately 800 to 850 DD60s. So with highs of 90 degrees and lows of 70 degrees every single day, it takes approximately 40 days to go from this to this. You have any cooler weather, cloudy weather, well then your time it takes to go from this to this increases. This is what takes cotton so long to mature. So. We've got our first first bloom down here that uh, bloomed uh, August uh, August 3rd, August 4th. Well, this bowl right here will be mature and be ready to open up probably sometime around the middle of September. However, we got this mature bowl here. Well, we got a bowl up here that just bloomed within the within the last last few days. So this one might not mature until late October. In fact, this one likely won't mature at all with our season up here. This one bloomed too late really to make any harvestable fruit. If I had to guess, I would say we go down the plant, you know, our last harvestable fruit on this plant would probably be this bowl here. This one probably bloomed, uh, I would guess sometime between that August 15th and August 20th date. Uh, based upon our historical weather, this one will, will probably be able to accumulate enough heat units to mature out and open up before it gets too cold that the cotton completely quits growing physiologically. But generally speaking, if we have decent growing conditions in a year, it takes at least five months to go from seed to a crop that is matured out. And then it takes about another two weeks once uh, for the defoliants that we apply at the end of the growing season to completely uh, cause the cotton plant to shed all its leaves and cause all the rest of the bowls that are mature to open up to where we can make one pass with a harvester to get all of the cotton. Now during that five months that the cotton is growing, I mean, you, as you can imagine, it is uh, it's exposed to all different types of pests that are wanting to hurt the cotton crop. You know, all the way from the very first cotyledons that come up out of the ground, we've got thrips wanting to suck the sap out of the plant, which can really slow down the development plant or could ultimately kill it. You know, all the way up to, you know, as it's setting fruit, you've got several different pests that come in here and like to feed on the, either the square or the, or the immature bowl by piercing it, sucking its juices out and cause lint to stain or if a square is damaged, it could cause the cotton to abort it. And in fact, this year, uh, at the uh, July 31st, we had an extremely severe storm come through here with about 70 mile per hour winds that really tasseled the cotton about real vigorously, it actually laid it down in quite a few places. And it actually caused the cotton to produce uh, a flush of ethylene, which is a hormone. And that ethylene uh, signified that the cotton was under stress and because of that ethylene, it caused the cotton plant to abort quite a bit of fruit. As you can see right here, uh, this first position square was likely aborted because of that flush of ethylene. You know, we got a second position, we got a second position square down here. All that was likely caused by that flush of ethylene. Uh, and then if we have say a lot of cloudy days, uh, or if we have several cloudy days in a row, 
That means that the cotton plant's not getting enough sunlight to produce all the photosynthate it needs to support all this fruit, and then it will start kicking off fruit because it physiologically cannot support it anymore. So, uh, same thing with drought. Uh, you know, if uh, we get in a, a severe enough drought, the cotton can't pull up the moisture and nutrients it needs to handle this big bowl load, it'll start chunking it off. And it does that to focus uh, attention on the fruit that it knows that it, it can, can produce. So like I said, all these things are working to reduce yields year after year. But anyway, that just gives you just kind of a brief overview on how a cotton plant grows and develops. Like I said, it, it's fascinating. Out of all the crops I grow, this is the one that I just love to study. You know, it's just fascinating how it does everything by the books, how it can compensate for in different environmental conditions and, and everything else, but it's also definitely the crop that takes by far the most work to produce because there's so many things wanting to reduce yield uh, every year. And like I said, it, it doesn't take a whole lot to make a cotton plant decide to start chunking fruit off. And as you can see, I mean, there's not a whole, it's not like a soybean plant where you have you know, where you might have a hundred different pods on on a on a plant, and losing one or two of them is not a big deal. You start losing one, two, three cotton bowls on a plant, especially lower down on, on the canopy, it can become a pretty big deal real quickly. But ultimately, uh, to grow a cotton crop, like I said, it takes about roughly five to five and a half months in our environment. It takes between 22 to 2400 DD60s from the time you plant until the time that a cotton plant is mature. And harvest definitely takes a lot longer to grow this season than what soybeans do or what corn does and that's why it's not grown uh, farther north than, than where we're at but anyway i hope you found this video in very informative and i hope you can appreciate what goes into producing uh, the fiber that makes your clothing your bed sheets your towels mops i mean cotton is in everything i like to encourage you to to take all this into account when you make your purchasing decisions, when you go to the store, you know, support your American farmer that grows a, a bountiful supply of, of natural, sustainable fiber, as opposed to your uh, synthetic fabrics, you know, your polyester, your rayon, your spandex, all that kind of stuff, which is produced using petroleum products. It is not sustainable at all and cotton is far better for the environment. It, uh, when we're done with cotton fiber, it's completely made of cellulose. It breaks down in the environment, whereas your synthetic fibers do not break down. They're there in perpetuity. So I'd like you to encourage you to take all that stuff into account when you make your purchasing decisions and support the American cotton farmer. We'd really appreciate it. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching and uh, be sure to check our other videos on this playlist on how ag stuff works. I've got a video on how a cotton picker works. So once all this, once we got a snow white field of cotton right here, I've got a video on the machine that comes through and harvests it and shows you how, how it works. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, check back with us. We'll be back again soon.